Full Metal Panic, an anime I have absolutely no idea about. Um, no wait, that's not true, I do know two things about it. First, it's about human-controlled robots. Second, it provided Revoltech fans with one of the coolest action and accessory-packed toys in the history of the line. I am of course talking about ARX-8 Levitane. This toy was quite popular. How popular, you ask? Well, let's just say that this is the second release, and Kayodo has never made any second release before this toy. So yeah, that kind of shows how popular it was. But that's just talking on our side. How cool this toy is in reality, we're about to find out. Hello, my name is Walt Spolin's main toy dude, and with you on Collection DX, we're about to unpack and have a closer look at this baby. Please fasten your seatbelts and get ready for some arm slave action. back after the opening credits. I hope most of you are still with us because now we're going to have a closer look at Levitane who as you can obviously see is now out of the box. This is a very nice design. I'll admit I don't know much about the aesthetics of the show as I haven't watched it and there are pretty small chances I will re repair this but the aesthetics is very appealing for me. Dynamic very well used colors, and I really like the fact that the revoltic joints blend in this design rather well. Very nice. I'd say for revoltic standards this is a rather sharp thing. Good colors, good details. Okay, the head is debatable but it's probably a matter of your aesthetics. Really nice. Also, as you can see, this Revoltec has one of the... Oh, my focus is getting screwed. Yeah. There we go. Sorry about that. As I was saying, this Revoltec has one very important feature. It can stand on its own. While most Revoltecs are designed specifically for crazy poses and are not very suited for just simple standing there on the toy shelf, uh, most of them can achieve it anyway, but uh, some cases do not. So you try to pose them, they fall. You try again, they fall. And so on and so on until you're tired. But uh, Levitane does not seem to have this problem. Thankfully, I think this is because I realigned some of the faulty revoltic joints. You know, these things are not symmetrical, so if you align them in the way that you have X here and X here, they might have issues with standing, so you have to make them face each other to make it symmetrical and make it more stable. And now... <laughs> very funny. Now, Levitane can stand, which is very nice because sometimes using the uh, special Revoltec tripod action base is not always what we want to do, which is great. Mm-hmm. I also like the fact that some of these parts do come off for additional features, but it's not that obvious, it's rather well covered. And now I think it's time for some posability of the gu this guy. So, starting from the head, it's a chicken neck, so it can go like this. The arms can go pretty much like this and up and down, a revolting joint here. I kind of wish the arm piece here would move or at least swivel it doesn't, unfortunately, but it's still better than in case of, for example, Revoltec Convoy and Ultra Magnus, when this is locked in one position, it can go you know, like this and like that. So it's still better. The elbows can go about 90 degrees. The wrists are 360. They are simple pegs, I can see, which is really great because um, I remember the old Revoltec spec system when these were thinner by the base and just a bit more bulkier here at the end to make it more secure, but unfortunately it also made swapping the hands a real pain. I know because I have several things like that, like the giant Robo and GR2. It's not exactly pleasant, so yeah. I also was surprised by the posability of the legs. 
because the revoltic joint is inserted into the well, into the buttocks in this place. But even with that, it can go backwards like this and forwards like this. And I was really surprised by that in a pleasant way. Now, for some odd reason, we have the knee guards moving and we have also the toe guards moving. I have absolutely no idea who thought that was a good idea, but it's there anyway, so we just have to accept it. The knees move around this, which is nice. And the feet move like this. Um, this uh, ankle guard makes it a bit hard to pose it more. I think if you t wiggle it with it a bit and take out the revoltic joint just few millimeters, it would allow about a bit bigger swivel to the front, but I don't know, I haven't tested that. Oh, and of course we have the chest moving. Great. Of course these can all swing, because as you know, every revolting joint acts as a triple joint, which gives us a very huge number of possibility. Now, let's talk about the accessories. And honestly, these are in a huge number. I'm going to show you just one thing to show it. This is the tray in which our AX Levitane came in. Look how it is packed with accessories. I've never seen a Revoltec box so covered with accessories. Actually, there were so many that there were more accessories here taped with, with a glue tape here. They just didn't all fit to the front, which is amazing. And in a moment, we'll see all of these accessories and other features of this toy. But first, some size comparisons. And here we have the comparisons. We have Levitane, you know, this guy, you just seen him. EVA Unit 02 from Evangelion 2.0, the new movie edition. Glio System Fendran, which I found attached to my package with uh, Evangelion Awak Awakening version and Levitane that Josh sent me over to review. And now we have Rise of the Cobra Heavy Duty in some reaction armor version or something like that. I barely can remember all of these Rise of Cobra designations. And of course, last we have Sledge from Transformers Power Core Combiners without his minicons or other drones, but yeah. So this is basically ab about just a bit smaller than a Transformers Deluxe, if that tells you anything, I hope. But uh, enough of comparisons, we have lots of lots of lots of stuff to do with the accessories, so let's not waste any more time. So, accessories, right. We'll start off by showing you what's new to this second release of this Revoltec. Namely, this little coin, which has 10 Revoltec points, which, as I pointed, pointed out in my previous Revoltec review, has absolutely no meaning unless you are in Japan, where you can swap it for accessories, uh, assemble box, revolting counterparts, something like that. If you don't live in Japan, this is pretty much useless. We can't say the same about this though. A revolt container, which helps you store your smaller accessories. And trust me, in case of this guy, this is more than a welcome addition. Forever container, yeah, nice details. If you want to see this better, then come to one of my Evangelion reviews, because now my macro just doesn't allow any more than this. And of course we have five holes which allow us to store fists and other plug-type accessories. Yay! Another really great thing that I like is this baby. A new clear Revoltec stand with an extension white, which is reserved for the newer Revoltic releases, which is funny because this came around about, out about around the time of Evangelions and they got the black old stand and this guy gets new, which I really appreciate because it goes with the white of the toy so much better. And like I said, this goes to, well, uh, it goes here and it stays in nicely. Which means that the poses will be really stable and unless you are really trying, this will not topple over on the stand. Okay, now that we got the new additions, we can show you this. <laughs> yeah, well, I kind of forgot about 
forgot to tell about this a second ago, but this is an instruction manual for all the accessories. I'm not kidding, it's one side only, but still, I don't think any other Revolt Tech comes with something like this. This shows the scale of the accessory count and the major range of possibilities this Revolt Tech gives, gives us. Really nice. Yeah, and this looks almost like artwork from Katoki Haji, Hajime Katoki. Sorry about that. What kind of a Gundam fan am I? So now let's start this show with the regular accessories. This is my turn because basically I think we can uh, say there are two types of accessories for this toy. The regular issued one and those that go for, how shall I say it, super mode or a packed up mode or a killer mode or basically upgraded form of levitane. But we'll start with the obvious things that are for, how shall I say, more everyday use. So we have fists. Five additional fists. We have an open fist. Come on macro. Yeah, open fist. Really nice. We've got two knife holding fists which are designed to hold the knife weapons. Alright, could I have another one in my hand? Yeah. Or is it? Hmm. Yeah, you can see the difference. The thumb is closed and opened here. But one of them is for the knives, the other is for guns. Speaking of which, we have the shotgun. A really nice pump action weapon. Too bad this is not collapsible, but oh well, this is a Revoltech. Still looks nice and sharp and everything. And the funny thing about this is that it goes in like this. Right? Usually it does. Something like this. And this hand is at angle. So, yeah, we can swap this. Attach this. And now we have Levitane ready for some... Well, for not being nice to enemies, I'd say. And he can also use the other splay hand. Splay hand? I think it, you called it like that. To create some poses of him getting angry at the guys and holding his weapon because every badass robot needs to hold his gun. Ah, excellent. But that's not all. He also comes with other stuff, which are the knives. Small little nice knives that go in the other type of hands. Like this. Well, they usually do. I hope they usually do. Well, yeah, that's the problem. These Revoltech things sometimes are annoyingly hard to place. Alright, so it works better with this. Great. So we can now change this hand, and now we have. Uh, Levitane with a knife and a gun. So this is getting better every every moment. Yeah. We also have another type of odd in my opinion accessories which are these little critters which are well despite what they look like these are grenades. And these grenades come with specific arms that you can place them in. Wait, this is going to be easy if I just show you another set. It comes with two grenades and two arms like that. And what you do with them is you put them inside this out this breast panel. You swap out this. Usually it works, I'm afraid. Well, that's not a problem. These things are extremely hard to detach, so not a good thing. But the basic idea it is goes behind this. Let me have my ah oh, no. Oh, here it goes now. Yeah, that's, this is the problem with this. It comes out, but it comes out... Oh, that's the problem. I used the wrong angle. What a genius I am. Anyway, this goes here. And... You plug it in. Right, like that. You try at least. Odd places for revolting joints. 
and you have now Levitain. I admit I'm not really sure what's the purpose of this because I'm not a Levitain watcher. I don't know, maybe this serves the purpose that this opens and the arm out, comes out with the grenade or something. I'm simply not sure. So yeah, these are the basic mode accessories. I'm not going to use these arms ever again. Please forgive me for that. So let's put this inside again. Remember what angle to do it. Yeah. They go in in specific order. Right, like that. And now... Hmm, interesting pose. Now we can go to Levitain Super Mode. So, back in a moment I need to make one preparation. And now the preparations are done, and I suppose you get the idea what I just did. I swapped a few parts here and there, and now we have an upgraded form of Levitain. So, what is new? As you can see, new knee guards, new shoulder guards, some new, nice new head style, and a big weapon on his back. By the way, you can see that this is not much of a problem with balancing him if you just try. Okay, I said that too soon, but usually it stands just fine. So, this is our new powered up Levitain, and let's address what's powered up specifically. So let's start from bottoms up, the knees. The knees are new pieces that, despite how they look like, are asymmetrical. At least that's what the manual says. And they are new guards carrying new assault knives, which now are in collapsed form and in extended form look like this. Very nice. I really appreciate the fact that this looks like attached to the normal knee guard. Right. Really nice. And uh, it fits in these hands, and I figure that's the purpose of these hands. Not to carry the small knives, but these anti-tank anti ones. So it looks really nice. Unfortunately, only one hand seems to cope with these perfectly. The other is a pain, so I'm not going to attach these right now. I'll go up, and we have the new, almost fast pack-like shoulder guards, which are actually two-piece each, and maybe, as you can see on the left arm, they come off and stay on on a random. The left one and mine is very flimsy and it just pops out when it wants to. This missile-like part is rotatable and on the back, or up, it's hard to say what is what in this toy. Aside from nice details, we have two pegs that are used on the right arm to hold the weapons. By the way, let's look at that at the moment. As you can see, we have this enormous gun in two pieces and it's holded by, new angle needed, right? Two arms. One is the arm specifically used by the gun and the other is custom, which you add on. And you can see the somewhat misshaped gun barrel here. But it overall works. I'm sure I didn't do it in the proper way suggested by the instructions, but uh, I think it works too. And what else? This fell off. I'll handle that in a second. I will... Oh, this fell off too. Great. I'll use this uh, time to unplug the weapon. Despite how it looks, it snaps into the barrel just fine. You don't, you don't have to worry about destroying it while trying to attach the gun. Barrel. So now let's attach these again. Hopefully they will not fall off like that. But now that the gun is outside of the main frame, we can look at the new hairdo, which from what I read on some robot sites is actually a manifestation of energy emanating from Levitain's head for some reason. Again, I haven't watched Full Metal Panic, so I have no idea what is this for. Anyway, this new blue energy hairstyle looks quite nice and almost like, I don't know, swinging in the wind. It looks really epic. Not as epic as Gordon Lagan, but that's very hard to achieve, as we all know. But there's one thing you have to watch out. This rotates, much like a ponytail on my Microman Godo, and the connection piece is this black thingy that protrudes here and it connects with the blue piece. I don't know, by, by glue or something, but it's very fragile and I 
advice, advise you to watch out how you handle it because it may snap off easily. By the way, maybe some of you noticed that, maybe some did not, but this new headpiece is present. It's pretty much identical aside from the ponytail attachment. This new mode looks really nice. The funny thing is it's not so much different from the normal version and yet it has a feeling of newness, much like super mode of Cybertron Prime. Eh, just adding five pounds and it's already a new toy, which is a wonderful thing. So we could attach these guns, all these guns, they are already in hands even for this purpose, but I think you're more interested in this BFG, big frigging gun. So Attaching it is not that easy, despite how it looks. You have to first disassemble it, partly, then find the proper hand. Thankfully we have only five spurs, so it's not that hard. Attach this again, and then take this hand off, and attach this at an angle, because this is a diagonal wrist joint, which is sometimes awesome, sometimes not. And I'll explain why it is sometimes awesome not in a second, I just have to plug this in. Oh, right. And now we have Levitain with a gun. Not the most powerful gun he can get yet, but it's working nice on its own, I guess. And uh, as you can see, this is at an angle, the hand I mean, and technically the handle of the gun should swing too. So it's basically two pieces stuck together, but in my case, the handle was stuck on so hard that when I tried to rotate it like the instruction said I should, it broke off. Sadly, so I had to use super glue and it shall rotate no more, which is sad, but I'm not going to complain that much because, well, the spinning thing is not really all that important for me. He just stands on my shelf. Another interesting thing is the gun clip with a nice bullet. Unfortunately, it stays there forever. It's actually a two piece with two magazines. So in case one ammunition pod ends, you just click it out, click in the other, and then you can fire again at your enemies like you should. Hooray. So nice, but the real thing for this gun comes when you plug out this meager little barrel and change this for this behemoth. And now we have the mega gun. Man, that looks just nice. Just look at the size of this thing. If my focus is lost. Sorry about that. Focus. Oh, here we go. This thing is just humongous. And the good thing, it does not work to the misfavor of the balance so much. Even if it's not attached again to the arm plugs like it should. Yes, the instruction says technically this should go here. But for some reason, I never managed to pull that off and I'm not going to bother again. It's just too much of a hassle, I guess. So yeah, we have a robot with two mode, gun, shotgun, knives, grenades, more knives and other stuff. So it's time for some summary conclusion to round it all up. Right. Time for the verdict. I'm going to split mine into three categories. The figure, the accessories, and quality control and other minor details. So, the figure. Levitain is a fantastic revoltic in my opinion. One of the best I have from the old generation. This mold is a few years old, mind you, and it works fantastically. It's very poseable, many points of articulation, good execution of details and overall a very nice figure, not to mention two modes that pretty much make you buy two separate toys, which is fantastic. What makes it so fantastic is the accessory count, which is amazing. Pretty much one of the biggest accessory counts in Revoltech history. Of course, it makes the set, well, more expensive than other Revoltechs. Or does it? New Revoltics are more expensive anyway, so it's hard to tell now if it's so much more expensive than normal releases of nowadays. But yeah, I think the price is justified because what you get, aside from the hands, is many weapons, many small things like the separate grenades, arms, grapplers, guns. Really fantastic if you're a fan of fighting robots. Just brilliant. And uh, the third category, which is the quality control and other stuff, well, that's just 
the main area when I have some small issues. And the small issues is for example how some pieces are just too tight for their own good and are prone to snap off. Also, the smaller revolting joints used for example in the knee guards and in the arms get loose over time, depending on how much you play with this very quickly or slowly, but the point is they are getting loose and for example when handling things like the main gun it can get quite problematic when you try to make battle poses. But if you try a bit more I suppose you can overcome this issue. Also, addition of new stuff like the new stand, the revolt container, the pointless coin, it all adds up to the effect of a great revolt tech. I'm not going to bother with giving it a 9 out of 10 or something like that, because that's out inside of the point. I'm just going to say it's a great revolt tech, and if you are looking to expand your revolt tech collection, try this one. It's a really great thing. Oh yeah, and you can always buy it, buy it if you are a Full Metal Panic fan. That too, yes. So overall, great revolt techs. This has been Wallace, Poland's main toy dude, here at Collection DX. I hope you enjoyed this review, I hope I didn't bore you to death, and I hope we will meet again soon in both video and photo review form. Until then!